So the other day, I got in a fight with my wife. Straight up, Johns, it was over something tiny, something insignificant. Now, don't worry, I didn't say anything stupid. In fact, I was smart enough to remove myself from the situation and go for a drive. Now, as I'm driving down the highway, this thought goes through my head. You know, if there's somebody up there, give me a sign on what I should do. And I kid you not, within 30 seconds, I pass a billboard that says, let go of your ego and apologize. And gents, I was shocked. And I immediately thought, is there anyone else up there, please, that's not gonna take the side of my wife? In any case, gents, my point is this. All around us, if you look for them, are signs that we need to level up as men. I've said it once and I'll say it again. The purpose of this channel is to help you become the man you know yourself to be. But let's face it, it's a lot easier to ignore the signs, to not step up. In fact, one of my favorite quotes from Sir Winston Churchill, men occasionally stumble over the truth, but most of them pick themselves up and hurry off as if nothing had happened. I bet there are 16 year olds that are watching this video that are more of a man than some 26 year olds out there. Being a man, it's about maturity. It's about responsibility. It's about how you handle different aspects of life. So the first hard truth, a man is financially independent. Now, what I'm talking about here is that you actually have the skills to be financially free. I know that things are intertwined, but still you want to be able to balance your own budget. You need to have money coming in, most likely through a job, but if you're working side gigs, if you've got a side job, that's cool too. Whatever it may be, you need to have your basics covered. You need to have more money coming in than going out. And if not, then you're working on a plan. You're at least in a system, maybe in school, you're investing in your future with a legitimate plan on how you're going to be able to get on your feet financially here soon. Gents, if you're still living with your parents because it makes sense financially, I had a buddy that did this till his early 30s and he had bought up like two investment properties. This was just simply, he was like, yeah, his mom cooked great food. He wasn't married yet. And he was like, yeah, this is, I get the best of both worlds. I'm, I'm saving a lot on rent. My point, gents, is that financial independence is one of the biggest markers of adulthood. And earning money isn't as hard as I think the media makes it out to be. Example, I met a 17 year old in my area the other day that made $30,000 over the summer stump grinding. So if you didn't know this, when you cut down a tree, those stumps are left. This guy just went out and rented a stump grinder, printed off like 500 business cards, went around, saw yards that had stumps in them, gave him his business card. And he said that first day before he could give out 25 cards, he already had five jobs lined up. Again, gents, I don't know your situation, but what is the quickest path for you to earn a few extra dollars? Maybe just take a chance and give it a shot. Next up, gents, practice self-reliance. Now, I'm not saying you got to take a survival course here. In fact, let's keep it really simple. Can you sew on a button? I mean, instead of paying a tailor 10 to 15 bucks to do this, how about you just do it yourself? And if you don't think sewing's manly, you apparently haven't watched Rambo. Those sewing skills come in handy. Another way to practice self-reliance, learn to cook a meal. In fact, you should have a couple signature dishes that you know how to cook, saute, barbecue to perfection. Or what about grilling a steak? I know for the longest time, I didn't understand the way that temperature, especially a higher temperature, played in caramel normalizing the outside of the meat. Seriously, just watching one video, reading one article and following it to the T, all of a sudden you know how to cook better than it seems like most restaurants. And very quickly, you're going to develop a skill that you'll be able to use the rest of your life. And speaking of living a better life, gents, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Life and Wave. This is the best electric toothbrush on the market. Seriously, I've had the Life and Wave now for over two months. I've traveled with it twice and I absolutely love this electric toothbrush and what it can do. Now, the first thing I want to highlight here is their innovative 60 degree oscillation and vibration system. And in that show, what this does is it makes it incredibly easy to efficiently and effectively brush your teeth. Gents, as you're brushing your teeth, the head is going to vibrate thousands of times. This is so much more effective than the old school manual toothbrushes that so many of you guys are using. And seriously, gents, take this from a guy that was using a manual toothbrush and ended up getting a little bit of gum disease because I wasn't effectively cleaning my teeth. And over time, I had a lot of plaque buildup. All right, so let me take a second and show you exactly what you're going to get. As you can see, this thing is packaged like an iPhone. Now, as you can see, we have the main electric toothbrush body right here. And then underneath, we've got the quick charge magnetic cable and three different brush heads. And what I love about this is it makes brushing and brushing efficiently a no brainer. Now, it literally took me 90 seconds to connect my app to my brush. With the app, you control vibration strength, oscillation range, and oscillation speed. That being said, if you just want to keep it simple, this thing turns on and off with a simple push of the button. And the best part, gents, 
the price. This brush is more affordable than most electric toothbrushes on the market. Seriously, gents, I absolutely love this electric toothbrush. Now that I've had a lot of time with it, this is, in my opinion, the best electric toothbrush on the market. So, again, gents, to grab your life and wave, use that link in the description of today's video. Go over and take advantage of this deal. It is not going to be around forever again. Use it or lose it. Use that link down in the description of today's video. So, this next step to manning up, I'm going to break into two parts. First up, you've got to have your goals. You've got to have your visions and then you've got to make sure that your actions day to day, week to week, month to month are aligned and taking you towards those goals. So, this concept in general is called goal nesting and as the name implies, the idea is that everything is in alignment. First up, you've got to have your azimuth. Anyone familiar with orienteering knows that that is your direction. That is the line that you're going to follow and one of the best ways to do this is to spot something in the distance and then go towards it. As you probably know, when you're out in the woods, you're out in the wilderness, even if you've got a compass, Oftentimes, the land, because of the way it's shaped, it's going to throw you off and it's easy to get turned around. You want to be using your compass to kind of bring you back to where you're going. But one of the easiest ways to be able to make sure you've got your way, especially when you have a clear side light of vision, is to have that marker. Oftentimes, it's going to be a peak. Maybe it's going to be a telephone pole. It's going to be something in the distance that you can see that you're going to keep realigning yourself on. Now, how this applies to you manning up? Well, a lot of guys say that they want to be financially independent. A lot of guys say that they've got lofty ambitions to learn how to fly a plane to be able to achieve something great in life. But then you look at their day to day habits and are they aligned with them getting closer to their goals? Let's talk about video games. So let's talk about social media. Both of these I know a lot of people spend a lot of time on. I'm not saying that they are completely bad, but if you're spending three hours a day on social media, which you can check with your screen time. And again, this is the hard truth. This is where you got to be honest with yourself. That eight hours a week that you're spending on those games. Games. Could you be spending that time studying to be able to get your pilot's license or doing odd jobs around your neighborhood to be able to earn the money to be able to pay for your flight lessons? Again, when you've got that big goal out there in front of you, I want to become a paramedic. And then you look at the actions that you're taking on a daily basis. And if most of them are not aligned with getting you closer to your goal, you probably want to take a step back and evaluate. Is this actually something I really do want? Sometimes it's easier just to say you want something, but if it is, then you need to man up and try to better align the actions you're taking with the goals you're going after. The next hard truth when it comes to manhood is that you've got to make the same choice that Hercules had in front of him between vice and virtue. So, if you don't know the story, apparently young Hercules, before he had accomplished anything, was approached by two beautiful women, vice and virtue. Now, Vice immediately jumped in his face and she's like, hey, I'm the easy choices. If you go with me, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be able to do this, do that, where you're always going to be chasing happiness and you'll get it sometimes. In fact, you'll get it most of the time. Trust me, let's go have a good time. Virtue, on the other hand, she stood back. There was something incredibly beautiful about her, but yet he saw the path that she was going down. This was a path of effort. This was a path of occasional pain. Yeah, this looked like this was not going to be the most agreeable journey. Now, of course, we know what path Hercules took. He went after virtue. He chose the hard tasks and it was the tasks of Hercules which we remember him for. In fact, that's what made Hercules who he was. Now, let's turn it towards you. What choices are you going to make? The easy choices or the hard choices. You've probably heard that great saying, easy choices lead you to a hard life. Hard choices lead you to an easier life. Now, personally, I always love sayings like that because they really make it easy to understand. And the thing that we know, you've got to make those harder choices. I'm not saying all the time, none of us are perfect. But if you can set up systems, if you can develop habits, if you can have rituals that push you towards making the decision before you have to, then I'm going to abstain from alcohol. I'm going to stay away from drugs. I am going to treat my body like a temple because I not only want to live a long life, but I want to live a good life. The next uncomfortable truth, the manning up, and I think one of the most powerful actions any man can take is full responsibility for his actions and his life. Now, I get it. There are things out of your control. You didn't get to choose your parents. You didn't get to choose where you were born. There are things that happened to you when you were a kid, illnesses you've been afflicted with, catastrophic situations that have just come your way. That being said, when you take ownership of your life, when you take ownership for sure of every action you've got control over, what you're going to find is that's the majority 
of things that are going on in your life. Yes, you are kind of choosing where you're going to go. All of a sudden, you come to this amazing truth. You have the power to change this. You see, if you're blaming others, if you're not in control of your actions, then you are at the mercy of others, whoever is controlling your actions. Therefore, you're rudderless. You have no ability to actually institute change. But when you face that uncomfortable, that very, you know, hard truth, because a lot of times you find that oh, I got to take responsibility actually for where I'm at for many of the stupid things I've done. But once you take that responsibility, you realize it's never too late to start taking steps in the right direction. You could be 60, you could be 70, but you know what? You can still repair some of those relationships. You can maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe your brother's not talking to you anymore, but you can write him a letter. You can let him know how you feel. There is never, if you have got even five minutes left on this earth, you still have time to take a step in the right direction. The next uncomfortable truth to becoming a man, don't be afraid to fumble, to look like a fool, to make mistakes. There are so many of us that won't try to repair our own washer or we won't try to do simple things because we don't want to look like a fool. How many guys won't dance because, yeah, you don't want to look like an idiot. Yet, if you were to take just a few lessons, and I know my friend Ryan Masters, he has this thing called Show Her Off, an amazing program. And I talked to Ryan about this, is that guys learn a few dance moves. All of a sudden, the women in their lives just love them from their, you know, their little girl that they can take out and turn around to their wife who's like, I didn't know you could move like this. Women want someone to dance with. And so many of you guys want to be able to better meet the ladies, guys, learn how to dance. But so many other things, like I talked about, fixing the washing machine. The other day, our washer went out and I was so proud of my son. I'm like, hey, it's out. Here's what I think could be the issue. I'll let you and your cousin figure it out. It helps when you got a buddy too, because both of you guys can fumble around together. They had to order a part. It took, you know, so it took two days to get this thing fixed, but lo and behold, the washing machine was fixed and these guys were proud. I was proud of them and uh, it's a small thing, but can you take a step? Can you actually just embrace failure, embrace the fact that maybe you're going to look like a fool, you're going to go through that suck period, but if you can do that, you are on the path to becoming a man who isn't afraid to actually put himself out there and try because when you try, you increase the likelihood you can succeed. Now, gents, I could have kept going on this video, but I got this other one for you here. I want you to check out. You're going to love this. If you like today's video, you are going to love this video. Boom, right here. Go check it out. I think it's a good one, but uh, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.